Dr. Dutler, I am so excited to sit down and yeah. hear a little bit more about your own ADHD journey. And I'm hoping that we might be able to go back to when you were diagnosed. I was diagnosed during a pre-med program at Michigan State University. And, you know, I had always struggled in high school. Um, you know, elementary school was easy. It got a little more difficult through middle school. And then, you know, high school, I struggled. And um, it was tough college. The pre-med program was, was difficult. And so my, my doctor suggested that I get tested. Now, this is in the mid-90s. So, you know, even then, ADHD was not really a thing. No. You know, but... Um, I, I was definitely positive. I'll put it like that. I was definitely positive. I ranked very, I did very well in my exam yeah, as well. Right. It's not a competition, but I was, I was definitely positive. And um, this whole thing, you know, with this whole grieving your past, I, you know, I felt that uh, quite a bit. But I remember the day I took the medication the first day and I had a microbiology class I had to go to and I took my medication. I rode my bike to class and I sat down and it was, um, it's almost a little emotional because I remember looking at the professor and the distractions melted away and this, this clarity of thought came upon me and my notes were immaculate and I remembered everything and I left the class uh, just awestruck. I'm, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I yeah. know it's hard and yeah. I felt it too. Mine was not as... Um, I would say monumental in the fact yeah. that you were in a microbiology class in a pre-med program. I was in a TJ Maxx parking lot <laughs> when I had my realization. Yeah, yeah. But it is, it's really nice to, to know that it happens for a lot of people. And, and yeah. medication isn't for everyone, so that's a very important part of it. But I'm curious, that diagnosis and that moment of clarity for you, mm -hmm. can you look back and, and see that that is a major point in, in your life, in your career? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think I would have made it through the pre-med program without it. Um, because, you know, for, for a lot of people, it isn't just school. It's, there are other responsibilities. You know, I had to work. You know, I had to, you know, work study time into that. So studying had to be productive. It was extremely important to make it through that. And I've taken very challenging classes. And, um, yeah, I don't think I would have been successful. And um, it's, it's nice to know that you're not broken, right? You see all these other people succeeding around you. And uh, with ADHD, it's easy to feel paralyzed by these tasks and, you know, to realize that you do have the same potential because this is the thing we have to really drive home to people, that ADHD, that is not a diagnosis of low intelligence. It's actually quite the contrary. People with ADHD oftentimes have, have high intelligence. Um, I just saw a, a very young kid yesterday, I think he was six, and um, scored very high in his IQ, but is really, really struggling socially and, and stuff in school. And, uh, and that's the problem. And now parents are aware of this. They're, they're, they're ahead of it now. And he's not going to deal with all the things that I had to deal with in the past. But, you know, very easily, this extremely brilliant young man could have, you know, built this narrative for himself that he was unintelligent. And, um, and that's a shame. It is. That's a shame. It is. And I think it's something yeah. that a lot of people deal with, regardless mm -hmm. of what your mental health Diagnosis, diagnosis mm -hmm. is. Yeah. So I'm curious, when you look at how ADHD has affected your life, mm -hmm. what are some of the negative things that stand out? And you talk about, you know, like high school was difficult. Mm -hmm. Is it the organizational side of things? Is it staying yeah. focused? Yeah. Yes and yes. Uh, so, you know, there are some negativities there, uh, but, but, you know, it's important to be honest with yourself and honest with people around you so they can support you better. So, you know, I was fortunate enough, my wife was a project manager. <laughs> and uh, so good she's, she, oh my word, yes. So, uh, and very good with money too. And so uh, she supports me. She writes, you know, lists for me. She, you know, we talk about my deficiencies pretty openly. And, um, and you know, I have a great executive administrator that helps with scheduling. So that's, that's the biggest thing. Um, time management is huge with ADHD. Um, and I still struggle with that because, you know, in our minds, our minds go so much faster. And so if I plan out my day and say, okay, I've got these four or five things I have to get done, in my mind, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bang those out really fast. But in reality, it takes longer. Yes. And we don't account for things like travel time or those things. So we're chronically running behind, we're chronically feeling stressed out because of the scheduling issues. So that's one deficiency. And the other one is prioritizing tasks because as an ADHDer, we prioritize tasks, not necessarily based on urgency, but how much that stimulates us during the day, right. right? So maybe this project needs to be done, but I really like this project. Exactly. So I'm gonna do that one instead. The shiny so, object. The shiny object, But yeah. it, it, 
the thing is we say the shiny object mm -hmm. and we joke about right, it. Right, right, But right. it's really the dopamine. It is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it absolutely is. And then getting distracted. So you may be in the middle of a task and that task generates a new task and now you're, you're off doing that. So, you know, once you recognize the deficiencies, you can start to mitigate them, but you have to be honest with yourself that they exist. And um, I think people who are newly diagnosed, maybe, you know, seeing this and hearing us, um, they may not realize that those deficiencies exist until now. They may be sitting there saying, oh my word, this is me, <laughs> this is what I do. This is ADHD, I never knew that. Yes, you know? and I will tell you, for ADHD Awareness Month mm -hmm. and Refocus Together, which yeah. 31 episodes, you know, 31 stories in 31 days, every person I talked to mentioned something new where I was mm -hmm. like, Oh. The light bulb moments. Light bulb moments. Yes. And I mean, time blindness, yes. Mm -hmm. I always knew I ran late. Right. But why was I running late? Right. Because my five minute trip into Target is never five minutes. It you isn't. know, never. But it's interesting the self awareness that mm -hmm. comes from being mm -hmm. open about things. Right. And and the other thing with people with ADHD is is uh, deadlines play a huge role. And so many times if you say you have 30 days to get this project done, we're going to sit on that project until the very last minute. And it's almost, I don't know if it's stimulating or something, but having that timeliner up against... It's the urgency. It's the urgency. And so it's things, the adrenaline rush. Yes. We, we, we kind of live for right. it. Right. And people without ADHD say, you know, why, why, why? do you wait yeah. to do it? There's, there's kind of a running joke with, with my wife and I. I tell her, you know, if you go and do something and you say, have the house ready, you know, I'll be home at 5 don't show up at 445 because it's not going to be done. Could you tell my mother that? Because I feel it's, I, how it's it is. the worst. It is. I mean, I have all day to do the task, but if you tell me you're going to be here at five and you need these things done, don't show up early because they won't be done. Or at least don't be mad if you show up early. Right. I'm like getting because, dressed, whatever, right. dinner, and the dog mm -hmm. is barking. And I'm like, right. mom, 30 yeah. minutes early. Come on. Yeah. You know what's really telling? I love, I love to talk about how people clean their house with ADHD. I don't know if you've you know, seen this in yourself, but... You watch someone without ADHD and they'll clean one room and they'll organize it all and you know they'll find things that go in other rooms, they'll put them in piles and you know then they'll take them up. But people with ADHD will start in the kitchen and we find the phone charger and then we bring it up to our room and now I'm cleaning the room and now I find the cup and I'm back in the kitchen. And this is how people with ADHD function. Mm -hmm. It's a and we get it all done. Uh -huh. But it's the distractibility is um, you really have to be cognizant of it to be effective. The the smirk on my face is yes, of course I totally yes. know what that yes. is like because that is exactly how yeah. not only I clean my house but uh -huh. like I go through the day. Right, right. So I would love to know from your perspective as a healthcare provider, how instrumental has it been being able to share your own experience or at least give people who come in to talk about ADHD? You can empathize. Okay. You can offer actual solutions that you know work because you've either tried them or you've looked into them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's such a complex diagnosis, and right. I think people get really overwhelmed by it. Mm -hmm. I, th I think, you know, it depends on the age, the, the impact that we're having. So for younger patients, you know, we talk about emotional regulation. We talk about, you know, this concept of rejection dysphoria. We talk about impulsivity and how that impacts interpersonal relationships with other students and even parents. You know, I, I've had parents say, you know, I love my child, but, you know, its draw of attention is so much that the house almost re revolves around this person, mm -hmm. right? And, and I don't want to use the word resentment, but it's a, it's a struggle, right? And, and when the child's away at a play date or something, you know, whew, the right. whole house can breathe. So, you know, making people aware of that and helping them navigate that is, is really, really helpful. And then the adult world, you know, helping them understand that this, this early phase of distractibility can be harnessed into this swirl of brilliance and ideas, right? Because we only talk about the negativity yes. of ADHD, but that's why many CEOs and entrepreneurs and you know people who are very creative have an ADHD, I'll call it maybe even a background, but diagnosis, yeah. because we see angles that other people don't see. You know, we think outside of the box, and again, you know, many people with ADHD have very high IQs, they're very intelligent, and they're solutionists. And so if you can harness that and mitigate some of the more problematic issues, people with ADHD can be very successful. And I think if you polled people with you know, high-level positions, CEOs and you know, innovators, I, I think you'd be surprised at the number that actually have ADHD. Well, and I think it's just going to continue to rise. Yeah. You know, the pandemic really opened up the conversation mm -hmm. about what was going on mm -hmm. for all of us yeah. and where our struggles were. Yeah. And 
you know, I was diagnosed right before turning 35. People I've talked to for the podcast, you know, diagnosed in their 50s. Mm -hmm. And the common denominator is when the structure or the coping mechanisms or the support, Mm -hmm. like a spouse, are gone, Mm -hmm. that's when your real brain, so to speak, kind of comes into action. It, and that's true. And it, and it will rear its head in different situations. Yes. So, you know, you'll have somebody who's been compensating for, say, 10 years, then they get a promotion or a new job that requires training and some other, you know, heavy lifting from, you know, a concentration standpoint, and, and then it rears its head again. And so I have patients that, you know, they take medication for a short period of time studying for a, a professional exam, or they, you know, have a promotion. And so we want to support them in those different phases of their lives. Um, I have one patient who works in construction, and Friday mornings are his paperwork day. So he takes one immediate release pill in the morning on Friday mornings. He does his payroll, his house receipts, and then when he's out working, he doesn't need it. Right. And so in the adult world, really understanding you know, what is the impact in each situation and then how can we mitigate that without medication and where does medication play a role in supporting that person. It's not just a rubber stamp diagnosis no. and it's not a one size fits all medication regimen. Um, you really have to consider all of the factors and build a plan that works for each patient. And it's other things like sleep and exercise and food. It is, yes. And you know, the art of medicine comes you know, in knowing which drugs do multiple things. Right. So you know, for example, if I have a patient that has social anxieties, you know, speaking in public, less of a hyperactive component and more of an inattentive component, I may use a drug like propranolol or Indorel, which helps with that, and then a very low dose stimulant. You know, someone who has some agitated depression alongside of their ADHD, more of an impulsivity issue, I may lean towards Wellbutrin in that patient. And so this is where the expertise comes in 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 saying to patients, okay, we're going to look at the whole picture of you, not just ADHD, all of your issues, and then find a a regimen that makes it most successful, taking the least amount of medication to to be helped. When you look at how ADHD shows up in your life, what do you see as the positives? What's your superpower? Well, I, you know, I think people with ADHD are fun. You know, we're fun we people. Are fun. We're fun people to be around, you know. And a lot of us are, you know, um, uh, charismatic, good public speakers, you know, solutionists. So I think, I think that's the, the fun part as we age. Um, and, you know, as Zach mentioned, I have a son with ADHD. We have, we have a riot together because, you know, we have similar personalities. And, uh, and I'm very honest with my son about it, too, that I have it. He, he sees my deficiencies as an adult, and I help him to not step on those landmines when he gets older. But, um, yeah, I, th- I, think, um, I think just being honest with yourself, comfortable with yourself, embracing those deficiencies, and recognizing the, the gifts is the key to success with ADHD as an adult. So one of the things that stood out to me with some mm-hmm. of the people I talked to was like the positivity and the self-awareness. Yes, yes, yeah. I want to end by asking, and I'm, I'm very curious because, you know, being a healthcare provider, sure. when you look at ADHD, and we've come so far even mm-hmm. just since ADHD Online was started, right. you know, the pandemic really escalated our understanding because we had to, mm-hmm. we had to figure it out. When you look at ADHD and what the general public knows about it, what do you wish you could change? Oh, that's a a great question. Uh, So many things. One is that it's not a diagnosis of character. It's brain chemistry is what it is. And so it's really important that kids know they're not broken, even adults. And um, it's something that should be addressed. it's something that when kids take medication, they have to understand it's not making them smarter. It just helps them to focus a little right. bit more. So a lot of time on education. But you know, the one th- thing I, w- I want people to know with ADHD is that um, um, it, it's, it, it can be a superpower. The potential's there. And, and in a population who sometimes sees a very dull future and uh, underestimates their potential, The number one thing I want them to know is that this harness correctly can be a superpower that can make you very, very successful. And you can be successful because of the ADHD, not in spite of the ADHD. Well, Dr. Zeltler, thank you so much for sharing your story for ADHD Awareness Month. I I truly appreciate you coming here. Thank you. You bet.